Hey guys, today we're going to look at the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. And uh, yes, I actually got this phone a few weeks ago and I've been using it actually as my main phone. And I wanted to use it for a while before I made a video about it. Um, because I think this phone is, it's a very interesting phone. And I decided to actually use it to replace both my iPhone and my iPad. So this device, you know, Tim Cook gets really mad at it because it replaces two Apple devices for me. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just an amazing phone. Um, I'm going to tell you guys my experience with it. It's not going to be an in-depth, uh, detailed review of this device or anything because there's so many YouTube videos already about this device. It is one of the most unique phones on the market. It is actually the only phone of its kind on the market, right? I mean, except for the first generation, but um, yeah, like there's pretty much no other phone like it. Um, so I decided to sell my Microsoft Surface Duo to get this phone. And I know there's been a lot of YouTube videos comparing the two. And why did I do that? Well, the thing about the Surface Duo is that um, I don't have it with me anymore, but um, you guys, you know, know I, you've, I've done a, a video on the Surface Duo already last year. Uh, but basically, it's almost like a like a small tablet, right? It's it's bigger and wider than a normal phone. It's definitely much wider than this. And you have to use basically both displays. Otherwise, it's not it's not really, the value proposition is not there, right? So I think of the Surface Duo as um, a device that is very, very niche. Like because you open it up, and of course you can only use one, you can use one screen. You don't have to use both screens. But if you're not using both screens, then might as well just use a normal phone, right? Why have, why only use one screen, right? So the value proposition isn't there if you only use one display. You have to use both of the displays to get your value out of it, right? In order to use both displays, you pretty much, you have to be multitasking almost all the time. And I just found out I don't really multitask as much as I thought I would. Because most of the time I'm using, uh, if I'm multitasking, I'm usually on Instagram or Messenger or uh, Kakao Talk, some kind of messaging like app, and I'm doing something else at the same time. But I'm not constantly texting someone, right? I'm not constantly texting someone on the other screen. It's just like only sometimes I get a notification and I'll text someone. So that use case isn't as uh, useful for me as I originally thought. I mean, if you're like an active social media user and then you got friends texting you all the time, I guess it makes sense to constantly have the other, you know, app in the other window open. But for me, I always found with the Surface Duo, I'm using one screen most of the time and then two screens like sometimes. And in that scenario, I don't think it's worth the value anymore, right? So really, I think the Surface Duo and a lot of comparisons have been made online about the Z Fold 2 versus the Surface Duo already. But for me, Surface Duo is a very niche device. Like you pretty much have to be multitasking all the time in order to really make use of it, which I'm not. Um, I'm using one screen most of the time. And so that's why I was looking at the Z Fold 2 and I was like, this device makes more sense for me because I'm using one screen actually a lot more than I'm using like two screens, right? I'm not actually multitasking as much as I thought I would. Um, so the Surface Duo, I just wasn't getting much value out of it. Right? I'm not constantly doing two things at once. Uh, so yeah, that's where the Z Fold 2 comes in and decide to use it. And uh, it's been two weeks so far and uh, I'm really loving this phone. This is a, I think this, this has become now my primary phone. And um, yeah, uh, I just, I'm just gonna do like a brief, you know, overview of um, of this phone. I, I'm sure you know people who have been keeping up with the smartphone space already know about this phone and what it can do. But this is just gonna be a short video uh, about um, the basics of this phone. Okay, so first of all, the specs. This phone was released in September of last year, so it's uh, it's actually about nine months old now, and that's why I was able to get it at a discount online. Now this phone originally retailed for two thousand bucks US. So I was, when, when this phone was announced last year, I, of course I didn't get it because it costs as much as an Alienware laptop or a Razer Blade, right? Like, <laughs> that's too expensive for me. Or, or an Asus Zephyrus, right? Like that, that kind of price is like gaming laptop level. So for me, I waited um, until it came down in price. So now you can get actually this phone online in open box condition for roughly half the price. I got this for $1,060. So almost, yeah, almost eleven hundred dollars. Like that's pretty much half the price that I originally retailed for. And at that price, that's pretty good. 
because that's the price where the iPhone uh, 12 Pro would come in, right? Um, and this is a more unique phone than the iPhone 12 Pro, right? Let's let's just be honest here. This is a very unique device. So the first early adopters, you know, they they paid two thousand bucks for it, but for me, I only paid um, a little bit more than half the price for this. So I'm glad to get that. I actually paid less for this than I did for my Motorola Razor Fold, <laughs> um, and this phone is a lot more powerful than that. So yeah, it's got two AMOLED screens. The inside screen is actually 120 hertz, and it's HDR10+. Um, the resolution, um, so this outer cover is a 6.2 inch display, A16 by 2260, um, but then it folds into folds out into a 7.6 inch display, 1768 by 2208. Um, and this display is not going to replace your 10 point uh, or 11 inch as I say iPad Pro it's not going to re replace your 11 inch iPad Pro it's not that big um, but I would say if you're using your tablet like if say if you have a iPad mini right if you have an iPad mini then this can actually replace your iPad mini right so for me actually I have a 10.5 inch iPad Pro um, but this has actually for most respects replaced that even um, and you know I tend to use my my laptop for anything that uh, needs a, like a bigger display. The 10.5 inch iPad Pro is somewhere in between, but this 7.6 inch display is actually pretty good enough. And I've been um, some games and stuff like that don't they don't fully like run natively on it and stuff. But for the most part, like whenever I need a big display, um, this 7.6 inch display is actually pretty good. And definitely for those of you who are using iPad Minis and smaller tablets, this will definitely is able to replace that, right? And in addition, you know, it's a normal phone. So that's where the versatility of this device comes in. It's normal, normal phone, and then it can also be uh, a mini tablet. So that's awesome. And it's it's running latest. Um, Android 11 is um, the latest right now. It has a Snapdragon 865 uh, Plus on it, and Adreno 650 GPU. There is no micro SD card slot. You know, don't expect that. Um, by the way, the back skin here is by dbrand. This is called a teardown skin, um, which they actually uh, look at the internals of this phone. And I'm actually kind of disappointed because I thought that you know it would they would make it like wrap around or something like that. So as I'm right now, it's a little bit weird because it's only on the back here, but this phone kind of wraps around like this. So <laughs> yeah, if I get a teardown skin, I'd probably want it to tear down and like. To expose the whole way, but anyways, the back skin here is a D brand teardown skin, and yeah, it's okay. I mean, uh, this color is the looks kind of like a rose champagne gold color, and uh, this is the one I found the most online. So, yeah, I mean, that's the one I found uh, for this price, so didn't have too much of a choice in it. I'm okay with the color. It's got 256 gigs of internal storage, 12 gigs of RAM. It's a lot. Now, why this phone really managed to replace my iPhone and uh, and my Surface Duo actually is the back camera here. So you can see the back camera here is actually pretty decent. Um, for most foldables that we've seen so far, the Motorola Razr Fold and uh, even last year's, well, the year before that, I should say, the first Samsung Galaxy Fold, um, the camera just wasn't that good. And the Microsoft Surface Duo has a really shitty camera, right? So the Motorola Razr Fold and the um, Surface Duo, both of those have really bad cameras, and you would never use it as your main shooter. Um, so this phone actually has a pretty decent shooter, so that means that it can actually be my main phone, right? I'm, I think most people would take the phone with the best camera as their main, as their main phone, right? If you have a, a shitty camera, that instantly puts it out of contention as my main phone. So uh, this phone actually can be my main phone, I thought, because it's got pretty decent cameras. It's got triple cameras on the back, as you can see, all 12 megapixels. Um, one is a f1.8 standard wide angle. Um, the other one is a f2.4 52 millimeter telephoto, and then third one is a f2.2 12 millimeter ultra wide. So it's got all three of the modes that we generally, you know, see on on the latest iPhones and stuff, right? You got 
your wide angle, your telephoto, your ultra wide, so it gets all the bases covered. And that's exactly what I need for my main phone, right? I just want to, for my main phone, I just want a phone that can at least do wide and ultra wide. Yeah, telephoto, I don't care too much about. It's not something I really use all that much, but wide and ultra wide mode, I definitely use those a lot. So those cameras, I definitely use a lot. Whatever phone I have as a, my, my main camera um, needs to have at least those two options. So yeah, um, the camera's actually pretty decent. Um, it's not going to be as good as the, the flagship Samsung phones. Um, but, you know, as far as uh, as cameras go in general, like this camera, like uh, according to uh, the reviews online, they did the, the A-B testing and everything. This camera is supposed to compete with the iPhone 11 and 11 Pros. So that's actually pretty good. Um, it's probably not as good as the 12 Pros, but if it's as good as the 11 Pros, that's fine because I, I really enjoyed using the 11, Pro, 11 Pros cameras. So... Yeah, um, if it's as good as the 11 Pro's cameras, then yeah, um, just use this as my main device. And I've taken a few pictures on this device so far already, and uh, it's okay. Um, it's not the best photos I've ever seen. I don't think... I was using my iPhone 12 mini. Um, I still kind of prefer my 12 mini's cameras, um, but this camera isn't bad. It's probably as good as my Pixel 4's, actually, which is actually really good. So if it matches up to my Pixel 4's cameras, then that's, that's pretty good, actually. And then... It's got um, two more cameras because it's got a front-facing camera here, which is, uh, they're both 10 megapixels. I think they're both the same. They're both 10 megapixel f2.2s. So you got one front-facing camera here, and then you got one inside here. So you got a total of five cameras on this device, like one, two, three, four, five. So you got five cameras, five lenses, I should say, um, on this device, right? So yeah, that's, that's actually pretty it incredible and you can see why this phone costs so much money right just design engineering is so unique and so much hardware in it um this has stereo speakers apparently um doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack unfortunately samsung has gone the way of uh, of apple when it comes to that um but you know apparently it does have a pretty decent dac in it um although i don't think it's as good as the lg dacs that uh, they put in their phones um but yeah uh, what else? I mean, these days phones really don't have much inputs and outputs, right? I mean, okay, volume rocker right here. This is a fingerprint sensor and a power button. And then you got your SIM card slot, no micro SD. Um, so you're stuck with our, whatever storage you get. And then um, you have a USB-C charging right there. And speakers. So stereo speakers. I think of those two sides. And that's really it. Hardware-wise, um, I mean, it's really impressive, right? It's not going to be the very, very top in specs like you would see in their flagships, but it's still uh, the, the specs are still pretty good and definitely better than any other foldable. Um, and I would say just for the the hardware controls and everything, it's not too different from uh, any other you know regular phone. So yeah, let's turn on the uh, the screen here. Uh, actually, I want to I want to show the side first. So Samsung has their logo on the side here it's, it's interesting how the hinge right it's like this and it just kind of folds in like that and just yeah disappears like that so it's interesting and you can actually um this is uh something they they call with like the the yoga laptops right the 360 degree laptops <laughs> they would call this like tent mode or something like that you put it like that or they, they call it like stand mode when you put it like that but this this device isn't like the Razer Fold in that um, you can actually put it at any angle you want and it's going to stay there, more or less, right? So it's almost like a mini laptop in that sense. You could use it as a mini laptop, actually. You can use it like this, this, and it shares this in common with the Z Flip, right, the vertical one. So yeah, you can put it at any angle and kind of, you know, do some typing down here, have some uh, app down up there. So yeah, you can actually do that. I believe some of the, the camera modes actually do that. So <clears throat> anyways, this is the, the outer screen. This is the one I use most of the time because, uh, well, you know, it, it takes some effort to actually open this up. And usually just to save on time, I just use the, the front pa panel display right here. Um, of course, let's try out the, the camera here. So, yep, you know, use the back camera. Um, but, you know, there's a front facing camera right here which, you know, it's okay. Um, 
this isn't going to be the best selfie camera or anything. Of course, you can make it even wider. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, that's that's good, uh, useful for selfies. Um, I think you might actually be able to use this with the inside screen, but yeah, we'll we'll take a look at that. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's it for yeah. This once you log in, right? I can just easily log in with yeah my finger right there, and then this is a very vertical aspect ratio. And one thing I do have to say about this device is how much better it is than the first generation. When I did a review of the Galaxy Fold One, um, you can tell like the the front display was you know a lot smaller. You can obviously tell it's a first gen product. This one is you know the phone that. The first one was a prototype, I would say. It's almost like a prototype where only early adopters would probably get the first one. The second one, the Z Fold 2, this is the one that people really should get, right? If, they're in, if they want something like this, um, they should get this one. Like, they improved upon the first one in every way and by leaps and bounds too, not just by like a small amount. I mean, just the, the, the cover displays, you know, it, it fills the entire... Um, it feels like the entire device now, right? Before it was just like 4.6 inches. You can't really do anything on that. So it looks a lot better. It feels really premium. Like this just feels like, you know, metal, right? Feels really premium. And, uh, oh, I covered this up, but it did say made in Korea on here. Manufactured in Korea. So this isn't actually made in China. This is, um, it's interesting. My Motorola Razr Fold is actually made in India. <laughs> it seems like the more complex phones are not actually made in China. Maybe the Huawei Mate X is though. Uh, but this phone, yeah, it's actually made in Korea. So that's something to note, it is not made in China. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you can, you can tilt it this way. So the front display does support landscape mode, but I would highly not recommend using this in landscape mode, not the front display. The front display, I would say almost exclusively for vertical, um, for vertical mode like this, yeah. And it is quite narrow, so that is something that it's, it's quite a bit more narrow than normal smartphones are, but I also find it easier to hold because of that reason. So it's almost like a Sony Xperia, right, and that's really tall and really skinny and makes it easier to hold. Like for me at least, very easy to hold this phone. So I actually appreciate that it's so narrow, right? But you know, those of you keep in mind that yeah, this display is quite a bit more narrow than, um, than your average smartphone display, okay? So of course, this is a great display on the front and it's a huge improvement over the first one. But of course, the main reason why people would want to buy this phone is right, the secondary display right here, the bigger 7.6 inch display, which um, is, you can change the wallpapers right on them, both of them differently. So you can set a different wallpaper for the inside display and the, the cover display, which is cool. Um, but it keeps the continuity, which is also really cool. So for example, I could be you know watching a YouTube video and uh, let's just go to video of my uh, gameplay videos right here, right? Yeah. So I can be watching my own gameplay video right here, or any YouTube video actually, and I'll open it up. Remember that? We did one like an Alka show like a year screen. ago. Too. Like this, yeah. right? Really, really cool. And then, um, so let's say something yeah. like this. And all I have to do is right, rotate it. it now. I can see rotate it. it. Yep. There you go. And then it flips over. And uh, yeah, and this is like... I find this really useful because, um, you know, when I was at one of the meetups that happened here recently and I, I just, you know, met a group of people and, you know, I was showing them something on YouTube, I was like, okay, this is the video I want to show you. And it's just so easy to pull out my phone, um, expand it, put into this tablet mode, right? I'll just open it up like this and then just show them the video, you know, on a much bigger display. So much easier, right? Compared to a regular smartphone, Right, it's just all these things that I did in my day-to-day -day life. If you think about it, right, you're using a smartphone all the time in your day-to-day day-to-day -day life, right, and you do something as simple as showing someone a YouTube video, like even that is so much better on this phone, right? Just like instead of the small tiny display, just open it up and then bam, show them like a full, you know, full screen, 7.6 inch YouTube display, um, YouTube video, and uh, yeah, you can easily show them or any pictures even, right? Imagine all the times you showed your friends all your pictures um, on your small phone display, right? And then you just open it up now, and then you can show them like the whole picture, like, you know, expanded and everything. You can see more details and everything like that. So just think about all the ways that you use this device, a smartphone daily, right? I can go on Facebook, 
right? Use Facebook all the time, and then you can expand it like this. Oh, it's in landscape mode. Um, but yeah, then you can see so much more, right? Just everything I feel is affected by this, right? Yeah, so it's, to me, that's, that's just the most amazing part of this phone, right? Um, it's everything that you do day to day is, is um, expanded, is enhanced by using this phone, right? Right, so say I use my maps, right? Google Maps. Um, all I have to do, right, open up the, open up the inner display and uh, you have much more wider area now and yeah, it's just, everything is enhanced by using this phone. Like, a bigger display, it really does matter, right? In a, if for everything, social media, reading web pages, um, gaming, right, maps, navigation, videos, anything, everything is like enhanced by this, having this bigger display. And, um, you know, everyone knows this, right? That's why they, people buy tablets and use tablets and I like iPads and stuff. But the problem has always been, that's not that portable, right? You can't carry around an iPad in your pocket. So even the mini ones. So that's why the, the Z Fold 2, really amazing. And the first one, but second one even more so because they improved upon it in every way, right? I can't show you the 120 hertz, but yeah, this this inner display is really like smooth, buttery smooth. I never experienced any like really lagging parts or anything like that. But yeah, I just love having that continuity, right? Um, let's say, uh, yeah, let's open a video right here, right? You can play uh, a video like this. I okay, am this not is... ugly as fuck. <laughs> yeah, actually, you can't really... I didn't say you were ugly as well, fuck. Well, you implied it. Okay, okay. It doesn't matter there if you're go. ugly as fuck or you're ugly... I wonder what, what was that. Um, let's play it's a video okay. like that. Okay. okay. It doesn't matter if you're so ugly this is how the video would look like on the front of the cover display, right? Or on a normal smartphone, right? Because you're watching I a movie and this is, this is what it looks like on a normal smartphone. What? You never told me that before. That's because I'm and, not you know, an you do use this smartphone every day to okay, show people videos, problem, to watch videos, and just, they don't know how right, to talk just to women. expand it you like know, this, and, what my problem is, yeah, it's so much better. I am better. not interesting. What am I supposed to say? I went to Magic Camp? Oh, the subtitles are messed up. But, uh, yeah, everything is enhanced by this device, right? Everything you do daily with your smartphone is enhanced by this device. That's, that's why I... Yeah, now I'm using the Z Fold 2, it's really kind of hard to go back to a normal phone now. Um, right, so I read, I read Wikipedia all the time, or any other web page, right? Go on a website, uh, read about a web page, okay, look, Space Jam New Legacy came out. Right, everyone's just kind of reading it like this on their smartphone. For me, it's like, okay, um, bam, I just open it up like this, and I have so much more room to read it now. It's like a Kindle now, right? <laughs> so... Yeah, it's just, this phone is so useful. I love using this phone. Um, and you might be wondering, okay, can you, can you multitask on this? Well, you actually kind of can. Um, first of all, I gotta say for the games and stuff, uh, yeah, like, like Hearthstone, it's not exactly, yeah, so obviously, like, this game is not optimized for this display. Um, I was expecting it to fill the entire there you display. Are. That's oh, that's loud. Adventures? So you guys can see how loud the speakers can get. It's not bad. The speakers are not bad on this at all. But yeah, this this game is not optimized for this tablet. <laughs> it's it's basically pretending that this is just a um, like a Galaxy Note or something like that. Um, but yeah, here. All right. So yeah, some games are going to be like that. Uh, it's not optimized yet, so just keep that in mind. Um, however, you will still have a pretty decently, um, you know, lot. You you'll have a decent real estate area to play your games on. Um, but yeah, um, the multitasking, so you can actually kind of do multitasking on this and how you do it is, so you open up, um, web browser, uh, oh, this was what I was reading, right? Okay. Yep. I, I read random Wikipedia articles all the time. Um, so you go here and then you hold on this and then you can do drag to open a full screen view or for pop-up view. So you go to pop-up view and then you have what? This is actually, you know, very similar to what you get on the Microsoft Windows, right? <laughs> you have like a, now you can actually resize it just like you can on a Windows machine. Um, so now you can, you can kind of multitask like this, right? You can actually make a whole bunch of these. So let's say Google Maps is another one. I can kind of put a multitask window like this and I have Wikipedia as well. So I can click that one 
and there you go it's it's almost like having a desktop now <laughs> so it's not quite as you know fluid as the Microsoft Surface Duo so obviously that's the strength of the Microsoft Surface Duo right if you're really multitasking all the time the Surface Duo is better for that but it's specifically designed to do that so the Z Fold 2 is not specifically designed for this but it has the ability to uh, VLC can do it as well so you can do this put in window here and then um, you can open oh I got two now so I can open this and I can open this so now I got three windows I can kind of all uh, drag them where I want okay you can put it wherever you want you can resize them however you want so yeah it takes a little bit more work um, obviously than the Surface Duo <laughs> but it is possible right so technically whatever you do on the Surface Duo you you can do on here you can multitask with multiple uh, windows like this it's just it takes some more work <laughs> and some apps don't work like this like Instagram actually won't work like this um, maybe Messenger will let's try Messenger this is definitely one of the apps I would use a lot when I'm multi oh you can okay cool so yeah um, then I will use Messenger, Wikipedia, Google Maps, yeah. So yeah, like I'll be texting with my friend and too. Uh, that's one of the common use cases for me. Um, yep. So yeah, I'm talking to my friend here. So yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, just <laughs> you can put as many windows as you as you want. Um, but there's definitely flexibility here if you want to multitask, right? Uh, also, I think. Yeah, if you do here, all right. So the keyboard appears on the bottom half of the display uh, when you're typing, and it is a split keyboard. It is reminiscent of what I have on my Samsung Q1 UMPC. <laughs> um, it will split the keyboard like this, and you can type it like this as you would, kind of like a mini laptop or UMPC or something like that. So that's pretty cool, and it will split like this actually if you, uh, yeah, in uh, vertical mode as well. So, just keep that in mind. The keyboard is like this when you're in the, the tablet mode. So, what happens actually if I go to the normal front display? Okay, that's interesting. So, yeah, I can actually bring up... Can I bring up these windows? Oh, okay. They were actually work on the front display, too. That's cool. Okay. So, they actually works on the front display. Huh. <laughs> interesting. Okay. I don't think I would ever use it on the front display because, you know, not much space. Um, but, you know, this these options are available. If you want to go back to the full screen, then go back to full screen like this. So, yeah. That is uh, pretty much it for the Galaxy Z Fold 2. I just think this is an amazing device. It it really is like a, almost like a revolutionary device, right? I don't use that word lightly, but... I mean, if you think about it, right? What if Apple made something like this, right? How many people will go crazy over that, right? <laughs> it just, it changes the way, it doesn't change the way you use a phone, but it just enhances everything you do on the phone, right? Whether it's taking notes, um, you know, navigation, uh, viewing pictures, looking at video, viewing movies, YouTube, social media, websites, web browsing, um, gaming to a limited degree, but yeah, everything you do on your smartphone uh, usually, right, um, is enhanced by this bigger screen. Like, it's just... Oh, I think there's a little bit lag with the accelerometer. Um, but yeah, I think that's the only quirk I've experienced so far. Um, but yeah, like, everything you do normally on a phone is just enhanced by, um, by this, this device. It's just the, the ability to turn it into a 7.3-inch tablet, a mini tablet, uh, is it's a huge it's a huge deal right like it just you have so much more viewing area um all the benefits you would think of getting a tablet right except now you have it in the palm of your hand you can put it in your pocket right how amazing is that right go on Cora now I have so much room to write on Cora right I don't have to type on like a tiny screen you have more room for your keyboard your hands everything right reading articles everything is enhanced everything you do on your smartphone is enhanced um and yeah, I, I just can't speak enough about how amazing this device is. And that's why I have it for my main phone. Um, the only thing is that it is kind of thick. Uh, I mean, of course, it has to be thick because it's a foldable. Um, but 
that's just something to keep in mind and that that's totally fine i i think it's just for me being able to grip this is easily right like this because it's so narrow so skinny it's so easy to grip um i'm totally fine with that uh just yeah it's just amazing um this device i can easily and then just do this and just show people you know videos on a much bigger screen and just yeah everything that you do normally on a smartphone is, is enhanced so i cannot um say anything more about this device than that uh just if you can pick up this device um do it like i know the cameras are not like super good or anything but it's decent it's pretty good um it's probably as good as my pixel 4 cameras which is which is good um and i don't really have anything else like it's not water resistant i mean that's that's just because yeah like it's it's still not the most durable phone you still got to be kind of careful of course it's not going to have the issues that the first generation did um but you still got to be kind of careful so it's not rugged uh, but really there's very little else uh, i can criticize about with this phone um no headphone jack no micro sd i guess you can say that as well um but yeah 120 hertz oled display oled displays for both very premium feeling um, yeah, I just think that this, this is an awesome phone. Um, if you can pick this up for, you know, the price I picked it up for, like less than, a little bit more than 50% <laughs> at the original MSRP, then do it. Um, it's totally worth it. Like this, this is just an awesome device. Um, like when I bought my Surface Duo, um, I just found I wasn't using it for the full value. Like I wasn't getting my money's worth out of it, right? Cause I wasn't multitasking all the time. But with this device, I feel like I'm getting my value all the time with it, right? Because I use that, I use this bigger display like all the time, right? It's just anything you can do on the small screen, you can do on the bigger display. And bigger display is just almost always better. Um, you know, it only takes, you know, a few seconds to open it. But yeah, I just find like most of the time I still use the, the you know, the cover display right here. Um, but it's just anything that whenever I'm reading articles or, you know, I was posting on social media, whenever I have any sort of downtime where I need to play with my phone and do something on my phone, then I can just easily open it. I know like most people do do that, right? I mean, you, that's what most people do with their smartphones. You see them just like texting on their phone, um, you know, just playing with their phone all the time. Whenever you play with your phone, it's served uh, a lot better by the bigger display. So it's just, I'm always getting my value out of using this phone. Like that's, uh, that's the difference, right? And that's why, for me, I'm going to keep using this device. Um, so Samsung will probably come out with a Samsung Z Fold 3 sometime soon. Uh, but for me, the Z Fold 2, like, this is this is already pretty good. It's good enough right now. And, uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for um, just a really cool device, a uh, device you can do way more on, that enhances everything you do with your normal smartphone, then um, I fully recommend this device. So, all right, one thing I forgot to talk about is the rear cameras, so I'm gonna do that now. Um, I'm gonna look at the rear cameras, and uh, I'm gonna do this using the front cover display first. So I got my test subject here, which is my Moondrop Sparks, and open up the camera, and this is gonna be the standard wide-angle camera right here, which is pretty good. Usually for, um, for for phone companies, they put their best lens technology on the standard wide-angle camera because that's what most people use. But for me, I use my ultra-wide almost as much, right? And you'll see some distortion here. I mean, that's just to, to be expected with the ultra-wide for most companies. Um, yeah, this in order to make it wider, they have to add some distortion to it. It is what it is. It's kind of like an action camera in that sense, but I, I use the ultra-wide almost as much as the wide-angle, honestly. Um, and then you have an optical zoom, which goes uh, 2x in. So there it is, 2x in um, optical zoom. You can actually go in even further with digital zoom. So this is a telephoto lens. And then you can go from uh, 0.5x, it's gonna be the ultra wide. You can go all the way up to 10x right here. Um, there we go, 10x. You can zoom all the way into our boobies right there. <laughs> um, then you can zoom out a little bit, 2x. But yeah, I recommend not going past 2x because this is going to be digital zoom. And digital zoom, obviously the quality isn't going to be very good. Um, optical zoom, you know, up to 2x is probably the best. You only use digital zoom if you have to. But um, yeah, that's it for the, the camera, um, for the photo. Then there's a single take mode. I'm not sure what this is, but this is some 
this is a, a Samsung specific technology. I think it takes a bunch of pictures and might adjust the lighting conditions or something for the best take. Isn't this similar to the HDR mode on the iPhone um, that I had a long time ago? I'm not sure. Uh, so I haven't used single take mode much. This, this looks like a Samsung technology um, video, of course. And then you have all these other uh, standard modes right here. Uh, I, I wonder what pro mode is. Maybe it's a mode you can adjust these settings, the ISO and stuff more manually. Um, and uh, maybe the shutter speed and everything. Uh, panorama mode, of course. Food mode. Now, I do take pictures of food a lot, so I wonder what this mode entails. The night mode, of course, uh, which I hope works in the ultra wide mode, because, yeah, I, I one of the things about my iPhone 11 Pro I didn't like is um, the night mode only worked on the standard wide angle. The ultra wide didn't have it, so the new 12, my 12 mini adds it, right? Um, night mode and ultra wide. So, yeah, I wonder if it only works in in uh, standard wide angle mode and portrait mode portrait video slow motion hyperlapse which is time lapse um interesting dual recording so you record from both cameras at the same time i wonder so uh yeah um that's all the the different settings here and you can do the selfie mode which is interesting so you can actually take selfies with the rear camera which is going to be better quality because usually I mean, they have a front camera here, but it's it's not going to be as good quality as the rear camera for most phones, right? Um, you know, that's the case. The rear camera is going to be better quality than the, the selfie camera, right? So in this case, you open up the phone like this, and then uh, this is what you do. So yeah, uh, you can take now selfies with the rear camera because now it's using the rear cameras here, right, uh, for taking selfies. So you can you're just going to have a better quality selfie. Of course it takes um, <laughs> a little bit more work. You can't take the selfies as fast, but you are going to get um, better quality, right, using the rear cameras. All right, so now let's open it up and let's look at the um, the camera in the tablet mode. So of course you have all the, the same options here. You just get a much wider interface. Yeah, let's see, the, even this is... <laughs> yeah, here we go. All right, so yeah, you obviously it's just like taking photos with the tablet in this mode. Um, yeah, ultra wide. Um, but now I think there's something pretty cool you can do with this. So you can actually, I'm gonna actually fold in like this, and there we go, right? So now um, this is my most recently uh, taken picture, right, from my gallery. So actually, let's just, I mean, let's take a picture like this. This will appear in my gallery. There we go. Let's take a picture. All right. So I took a picture of that, and now I'm gonna do this, and it, it knows when I'm putting it into this like semi laptop mode. But now you can see your gallery as well. This is the picture I just took, right? So you can kind of swipe through your your gallery here, and you can see um, you can compare it to the the previous picture that you took, which is pretty cool. Um, so. It's it's pretty cool how it intuitively knows that I, you know, I put it into this the you know, half laptop mode <laughs> thing. So yeah, like fold it down like this. Oh, it knows I'm in tablet mode. Then I fold it halfway and it knows I'm in this like laptop mode thing. That's pretty cool. So yeah, this mini laptop mode is uh, is kind of cool. But you can also, you know, do it this way and then it'll flip around. Oh, yeah, it'll flip around and then you can see. Um, you previously take a picture on this side and then all your controls on this side. Uh, what's also cool is that it has this cover type of display mode so you can give a preview of what you're taking using the back camera to other people I guess so they can see what you're taking so if you turn that on then my cover will actually have also a preview of what I'm taking as well. So that's pretty cool right? <laughs> so my cover display will also show a preview and then my inner display will also show a preview. Maybe this is useful in some situations, I guess, when um, I guess when other people are helping you take a picture, yeah, you know, when they're help when you're helping line up or something like that. Um, I mean, you already have like the the selfie help mode, I guess. So, um, so I guess this might help in situations where you're taking pictures of yourself, um, or you know when when you're lining up a shot or something like that. Other people are helping you line it up. I'm not sure, but anyways, you can turn the cover display on, and that'll give you also a preview. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the camera. I mean, pretty cool, right? You can do a lot of things with this phone um, that I guess other camera phones can't really do. And the phone camera isn't too bad, like I said. It's probably equivalent to like a um, Pixel 4 or iPhone 11, which is, you know, totally fine. So, 
Um, anyways, yeah, don't expect flagship specs out of this camera, but just, it's good enough for me. So, yeah, that's it for the camera. That's it, guys. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. Truly unique, one-of-a-kind device um, that changes the way that I use my smartphone almost um, for the better. So, just, just really awesome device. So, that's it, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and as always, thanks for watching.